All right, hi everyone. Thank you so much for enjoying the show and coming to see it. Um, I'll start off with my introduction and we'll go around with everyone involved in the show um, to do introductions. So first I'll start. Um, my name is Crystal Montgomery and I'm the production stage manager for Project Symphony. Um, and I'll go ahead and have Christian introduce himself. Hello everyone, my name is Christian Johnson. I am the associate artistic director for my musical. I am the director for Project Symphony. It's so wonderful to see you all here and we'll get ready to have a nice talk back. I'll pass it on down to my music director. Haley. Hello everybody, my name is Haley. I am the music director for Project Symphony this quarter and I will pass it on to Sophie. Hi everyone, good evening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, my name is Sophia Casas. I'm a third year and I'm the assistant director for Project Symphony and I guess I will pass it on to Valen. <laughs> Hello, uh, thank you for seeing the show and I'm so lucky to have the amazing team like support everything and yeah, it's really wonderful. So um, I'm the songwriter and the performer. I hope you saw my performance, it was really cool. Yeah, thank you. Uh, okay, let me see who's here. Maybe just pass it to Daniel. <laughs> Hello y'all, my name is Daniel Ureña. I'm a second year. I am a um, theater and dance uh, double major and um, I am a performer in this show. So yeah, <laughs> I'll pass it on to Sam. can't hear you. We can't hear you. I was muted. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Sam Kelto. I'm a second year student. I was a performer understudy for this sh show. Um, I um, acted as the unnamed character in All That We Got. And uh, I will pass it on to Lizzie. Sorry, I'm getting reoriented. Um, I'm assuming we're doing basic intros, so... Okay, I am Lizzie. Um, I am such was a singer slash performer in uh, Kayla's uh, Transparent, as well as Valen's Ready For You. I was one of the duet people in that. I don't think I have to say anything else, but <laughs> uh, who hasn't gone? Can you like do this? I believe Julianne and another person who I would like to go um, is Haley Brown, if you're out there. Uh, Julianne, would you like to share? <laughs> yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Julianne. I use she, they pronouns, and I am the co-education outreach director. Haley, take away. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Haley Brown. I use she, her, hers pronouns, and I'm one of the co-managing directors of Near Musical. All right, let me know if I've missed anyone, but I believe I have everyone um, already introduced. Um, I just wanted to thank you all for being here, for watching the show. Um, and I'd like to thank the cast and songwriters and Christian for all of your hard work today and for the past few months. So. We'll go ahead and talk a little about, you know, what this process is going to look like, um, what a talk back is. Um, it's just an open discussion. So I'll leave space for questions. Um, if you have any, you're more than welcome to message them in the chat or you can raise your hand um, and I'll go ahead and pick on you and read your question out loud. Um, so if you have any questions that you have or any initial reactions to the show, feel free to drop them in the chat or you can unmute yourself or raise your hand. Um, aside from that, I believe we have a few questions already prepared. I had a question. <laughs> um, I, I really enjoy the show. Thank you everyone for all your work. Um, I would like to ask uh, you all what your first impressions of uh, seeing the final project was. I think that question can go towards one of our performers and I'll pick on one of you guys if 
who wants to volunteer or I'll pick on somebody. Yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll pick myself oh. because I can't hey, be really late. I am so sorry for that. Um, I restarted my Mac for like the 16th time today. And for some reason, the 16th time was the charm. Well, it's good to have you back. Thank you. All right. All right, so the question was, what was the singing portion like towards the end of the process and what came out of that? So Eddie, if you want to sh I know you come from a very unique perspective because you're not only wrote the songs, but you also performed them. So if you could just share a little bit about what that process was like for you, what challenges you faced and what you, how you felt as you seen it come to fruition. Um, as we were getting closer and closer to the performance, um, there was a little bit of pressure, I can't lie, um, to kind of get everything done, especially for the performance part you know, a, a weekend and because of the fact that I was remote and my situation being remote was a little bit stricter than uh, everybody else's. So, you know, my visual, I had to think of stuff off the top of my head and I was going, okay, you know, uh, isolation is about COVID. We're all staying in home, you know, so, okay, we're going to make it this really like basic D DIY type of thing and you know we'll make it we'll make it this really quick little transition to America type of thing so you know performance wise um there wasn't really a lot of pressure I guess I would say I guess it was kind of more of like a being mentally prepared I guess just in case someone needed something else or they needed me to play back something and I'd be like oh okay cool that's you know Let's let's go ahead and you know stop whatever I need to do, get get on the mic and stuff and do do whatever I need to do, with like that. So um, overall, as we were getting closer and closer and closer to the performance, it wasn't like pressure in like finishing. I guess it was more pressure in like just in case something screws up, I need to be like prepared and be ready um, for me to step up with whatever I need to do. And you got through it. Yeah, so. <laughs> you got through it. Some great stuff came out of it. So to piggyback off that discussion, uh, Daniel, you were actually one of the very first scenes, scenes that we shot. So there were a lot of cool stuff came out of that experience and uh, we experimented with a lot of different avenues and angles and it was really, uh, really good stepping stone in my opinion for me musical actually. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time I've ever done something like this. And I think having to shoot it in the mom cafe was also uh, a really good homage to the organization as a whole. So, Daniel, do you mind sharing a little bit about what that experience was like when we got to mom, what the performance aspect was like, what was different than your usual uh, musical sense of how you did things before? Yeah, so um, definitely um, I have a lot more um, live um, experience when it comes to theater. I, um, I think I've only ever done one, like, recording with a camera. So, like, um, most of the time when it comes to, like, yeah, like, like recording myself, it's all new to me. So definitely when this new like video idea was coming out, I was like, oh, how am I gonna do this? Cause um, you know, it's different mediums, it's different. But um, honestly, it was, um, it was really fun doing the physical um, like recording, especially at the mom, even though we did have the COVID um, like restrictions and all of that and just everything happening. Um, it was just definitely really, um, it was really interesting because I'm just not like used to like the, um, <laughs> The whole um, camera, sorry, I'm just blabbering, but um, yeah, it's just, um, it was really fun because it was, I definitely got to um, experience like, because when you do it live, it's just, you got one chance to do it and that's it kind of thing. You know, when you're live, it's there, but like in the recording, you're like, oh wait, I didn't like that. Can I do it again? I'm like, oh, I didn't like that. Can I do it again? Kind of, yeah. So it was definitely interesting and stuff. And yeah, I, I definitely liked it. Yeah. Are there any questions about the process, what it was like, or I could just jump in, talk about where this all began a little bit. Uh, so again, everyone, hello, I'm Christian, the director of the show. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit into details about how this project even got off the ground. So very early into the summer, I became the associate artistic director for Mere Musical, and we were planning out our season. And we were going through saying what kind of performance rights could we get, what types of you know musicals could we do, through a virtual platform, through Zoom and stuff like that. And personally for me, I've always been one to try and interrogate how do we sort of adapt to the American theater landscape. And I told myself, what better ways can we do that than using what we have, which is the imagination of the students that we have here at UCSD. 
because we have a wealth of creativity that we're just not, you know, capitalizing on. So I said, why don't we try and do the very first original production for a musical and we make it as experimental and device as possible. And we did, we did a thing. So we spent a very long period about the summer, me and my music director going through, working through songwriters, interviewing them and making sure that we best serve their visions for their pieces. And we have a really good result. Uh, I think one of the biggest challenges for me, particularly coming from a very traditional way of directing theater, was understanding how to be vulnerable to this new medium and learning how to take advantage of that new medium as well. Normally, whenever I work on a piece, it's sort of where I'm, you know, thriving off of the in-person and the in-the-moment changes. The, uh, how do I say, the walkiness of this new age that we're trying to create. And I think what came out of it was something very unique and very uh, historical for the organization. And one thing I would like to say about the challenges that we faced with this piece is not only the structure of how do we connect all of our actors and performers and designers and everybody else and who's involved, but also how do we connect to ourselves when we're creating. It's a very isolating process to not only create by yourself, but also to not be in the room with the collaborators that you're sort of trying to connect with. There's still a disassociation factor to how we want to feel the room. You know, whenever we go in rehearsal, it's always about like, how do you feel the room and how do you create something out of that feeling? So this is always that, how do we be interconnected through that feeling? Uh, I'm rambling, but uh, one of the big challenges was how do we deal with the challenge of being creative in 2020? And it's one of the things I put in my director's note is, you know, it's been a very trying time for how do we find ourselves and how do we continue to be inspired and imaginative and innovative and in our artistry. And I think Project Symphony serves as a really good reflection about that tenacity that we have as artists. Uh, I think Project Symphony is going to be a good stepping stone or a good point of departure to how we understand uh, what limits can we break in terms of theater creating. So. Uh, that's my little bit of ramble about what Project Symphony is, how it came to be. Uh, I'm glad you all came out and did enjoy the piece. It was very enjoyable to me. It's very special to me. And it did come with a host of challenges, very personal and very external as well. So I'm really happy with the wonderful team of artists that I got to work with on it. And it really came to light. So. And then. I would actually like to pick on Haley, actually, because Haley, you throughout the summer were working really hand in hand, getting these songwriters to go on their pieces. What was that like? Just clarifying, you mean me and not Haley yes. Brown? Yes, okay. Haley Myers, yes. Yes. MD. Haley Gang, Haley Gang. And you spell it right too, that's double points. Um, yeah, so I've been on this team since about July-ish. And it's been a heck of a ride, I think. Um, when we solidified our songwriter team, like honestly, like looking from where we started to now, like I couldn't be happier. Like each and every one of you, like took your own personal situation, took your own personal sort of spin on how you view 2020 and you turned it into something really wonderful and quite frankly fun to watch. Like it was really cool just sort of thinking about like where were we in July, not only with this production but with our own lives. It's very interesting to think about and I think that in terms of the musical like we were meeting weekly, a couple of meetings a week, for each of us, working on the songs, working on the themes. I tried to act mostly just as like a translator because I wanted each and every individual songwriter's personal story to come out. But I also wanted to sort of not get in the way of that. So I was just there to sort of, you got this, you're doing great kind of thing. And you all did great. So I have no regrets, no complaints. Christian, you've been great too, sort of the theme. Everybody had their like individual word, which I thought was really cool. Like we've talked about, I think Eddie, you mentioned yours in your interview, pressure, that kind of thing. It was just so interesting to think about, like we made this in a pandemic and it all started back in July with like five songwriters on a Zoom call. So pat on the back for all of you for that. Yeah. Bravo to you guys. So uh, I guess I want to step into the next process, which was made this pro project very unique was the filming and the scenic aspect of everything as well. Uh, initially, when I was storyboarding each of the songs, because normally I'm used to having a script. 
normally. And the unique nature of this show is that we have many, many different types of scripts because they're all different lyrics. So each one comes with its own interpretation, its own vision. So whenever I was in the rooms just storyboarding, trying to figure out work with Brad about how do you, I was working with Brad very closely and saying, how do we plan out these shots and how do we plan each location and make it very unique to how it's going to be for each songwriter? Because obviously the songwriter has given us a gift and I want to make sure I'm being authentic to that gift as well. So uh, I wanted to ensure that we use as many of the spaces that were open to us as UCSD students. I wanted to sort of give us a homage to saying, hey, we're Tritons, we're UCSD students. How do we sort of use a lot of our spaces that we're, that we know about, maybe don't even know about. Many of the locations that we were scouting, a lot of performers said, wow, I didn't even know this existed. Wait, where, wait, where was this? Wait, wow. And then I was like, wow, you really don't know your campus that well, but now you do. So it's a really good example about where we are. It's about a lot about self-awareness in terms of the spaces that we occupy. And that was a big thing about this production is I wanted to say, what does it mean to have a body in the space and occupy it and perform their artistry during a pandemic, like Ailey said. It's not something that we're accustomed to. You know, usually we're accustomed to a very set structure about how things are done and how do we see them done well. But now we sort of have to embrace the, how do I say, uh, the unknown. How do we embrace the unknown and sort of make it our own? Because at the end of the day, that's what artistry is. We have to adapt, we're artists. and that's where we thrive the most is through our challenges and through uh, the hardest positions. That's what 2020 is, at least for me, is that it's been a challenge to me personally and artistically. And I'm glad I was able to engage in that challenge with this piece because <laughs> believe me, I have never had to work on a production that was so uh, unpredictable every day. So it was quite a, a thrill. And when I think about the songs in particular, each one is very different. Each one deals with a different theme. So we have Eddie's, who deals with a lot of uh, not only his own personal issues but as being a student and you know living in 2020 and going through the pressures of that, but also living in, a, in an institution like we are in America. You know, there are a lot of things that affect us as individuals and, and our rights and everything else. And how do you sort of juxtapose those themes with themes of you know, more about Valens who deal with more like the interconnections between people that I miss and I have a longing to connect with again. So they have very diametrically opposed themes, but in the end of the day, they're also representative of the human condition. And I think that's what makes this production quite beautiful is that yes, everybody's different. Yes, all of our reactions to 2020 are different, but that's what makes us unique because we're all individuals and how we embrace that individuality is what is together. So whenever we had all the summers come up with these themes, it's not to just say, okay, this is your chapter, this is your chapter, this is yours. It was to just show the uniqueness of all of you and how we all react to this 2020. So of course we couldn't obviously encapsulate all of the themes about and reactions that everybody has endured, even our audience members. But I would like to think that there was still some hint of relatability for everybody to find in each of the pieces. That was the goal. And if you got a reaction out of these pieces, then the goal was met. So. I'm rambling, so I will pick on somebody else to start speaking. Uh, uh, Valen, what was it like dealing with the songwriting process and all the rest of the production with your time zone difference? Because I know there were times where you were like, oh my gosh, no, it's time zone difference, what do I do? <laughs> oh my gosh, but we got through it. So you want to talk to us a little bit about that? Thank you, Christian. Yeah, so the whole process is just really cool though. and for sometimes it could be overwhelmed because like for one thing, um, yeah, I'm all new to UCSD and then I'm in a different time zone that's like 15 hours ahead of like Pacific time. So it's like, yeah, I'm sometimes when you were like in daytime and I'm in midnight or something. Yeah, so it's sometimes kind of hard to communicate, but I'm glad we like made through everything and then uh yeah this um songwriting is also actually still considered consider pretty new to me so it was a really cool experience yeah uh, to make everything happen and also like for the filming i couldn't even be in san diego and i have to pick like around the location of where i'm having and also it's really cool to 
like have the singers sing my song because they're amazing like really beautiful and yeah just working with you all is thank you all right uh speaking i want to piggyback off of val's pieces so uh lizzie i want to talk to you a little bit about the process that you were going through with this new musical project you're very musically inclined and you have a lot of experience with your own organizations as well so to have you on this piece was a, it was a big honor as well so i was wondering if you could share a little bit about your experiences with project symphony and how did you say really adaptable to the situation yeah well i was really excited coming into the project um because i love new music creations and whatnot and i thought it was really exciting that we could feature um like ucsc students and um like their thoughts of what's been happening and put into music. Uh, and that's really cool. Um, so I was like, kind of like, just like really excited going into the project. Um, and I liked how like Christian kept it pretty open-ended with um, like the collaborations that we did. Um, I'm trying to find like a more direct way to answer your question. Um, <laughs> don't worry um, about it. But uh, I don't know, like I thought it was really fun to just like, hear a bunch of like like example songs of, of all the songs like hear all the songwriters singing it and then just like put my own take on it and then I like recorded it and I just like like Daniel was saying it was really hard to like be happy with like one recording I was like I'm gonna do another I'm just gonna do another and then after some time I was like you know I'm just gonna be happy with this because this is like the way that I did it my first take and I honestly the first take is usually the best take which is really weird but um it's okay i i was really happy with it and i was glad that i got to collab with ashwin um we're friends with the acapella community so it was really nice to get to like do something together even though we didn't like we were never in the same room um and uh yeah it was a good time yeah let's go acapella All right, so I guess the next thing I want to talk about was the process that we went through in terms of uh, logistically getting things done. So we also added a dance component to, to the production very, let me talk to you about the dance part. Initially, we had auditions. We had a lot of people submit interest forms and such, and we had a really good list of performers. And I was telling myself, you know, we only have so, so, so many songs. So there's only so many spots to have performers in. But it's through all those interest forms that we saw, hey, there are actually some few folks here who actually have some dance experience and are interested in dancing. So why don't we try and, you know, hold some dance auditions as well? And it was sort of something that I just was thinking about throughout the summer, but it wasn't something I was set on because I didn't really have a choreography really set for the show because I intended it to be devised. But I said, hey, dancing can be devised as well. So we ended up having to send out forms to dancers and we ended up doing callbacks for them as well. And we ended up having my choreographer, Rahema, assist them in their process by also making them assistant choreographers. So they were able to devise their own pieces and help devise their own ways of how did they explore the songs and how what the reactions were to them. So having the songs juxtaposed with the performers in the frame was something that I really wanted to have shown because it shows not only our uh, musical reactions to a piece, but also our physical reactions. Because I think that plays a very big part in how we translate uh, our feelings of 2020. Uh, how do you feel trapped in the space? How do you feel more uh, liberated by your circumstances? You know, sometimes your circumstances aren't always limited, but they can also be uh, quite freeing. At least that's what I found very freeing in terms of my creative space with this piece. So in terms of logistics of getting the show done during a pandemic, one of the unique things that we ended up doing was taking all of our necessary precautions and our education and outreach team worked really closely with us and the management to figure out the best ways of how we execute ourselves in the safest way possible. So a big shout out to them for staying on top of it and helping us through that process. And I couldn't have asked to, for bigger honor than to produce a show, many shows that I've done this year during a pandemic. It's quite the privilege and the honor to do that. And I think it speaks to us as artists to be able to say, hey, we're in a space right now where a lot of people are not unknowing of what to do, but we have the privilege to tell stories. And it's what that what we do with that certain right and privilege to tell stories, what do we do with it? So I think it's very important that the work that we're doing is telling stories that are very unique and authentic to the human condition. 
because that's what we need right now. And that's what 2020 needs is authentic representations about who we are as individuals. And that's my ramble about that. Uh, uh, does anybody have any questions or reactions to the piece or any specific songs and moments? Performers, you're also welcome to. Oh, hey. Um, yeah, I feel like as theater makers, we often talk a lot about some of the negatives and the constraints of virtual theater, but I'm curious if you found any, be like any benefits or positivities, just like yes. unknown outcomes that you might continue um, pursuing, like after all of this is over. Yes, that's a very good question. Uh, I actually found this process to be the methods that we have to innovate with in terms of theater, I found to be a lot more liberating than a traditional sense, primarily because it makes things a lot more accessible to a broader audience. I found that using the platforms that we are today, that we've used for this project, Symphony, makes things more accessible for not only audience members, but for cast members. You know, I think using, juxtaposing in-person elements with virtual elements is something that's necessary to be carried on. And if we're gonna continue to have stories that are told by many, many different people. And with Project Symphony, one of the things was, oh, we're we gonna live stream it. Oh, are we gonna, you know, just record it? But having it recorded gives us, a, in sort of the YouTube premiere, gives us another aspect of being the theatricality of things. You know, we have our, our call, the curtain sort of type of thing, but uh, I think it gives us a unique perspective of, I think it's very humbling as well to what we do as artists. Uh, I have a very interesting opinion about the way things have gone. I think what's happened with our current, with the previous ways of how theater was done was a necessary change that had to happen. I think we needed to figure out different ways about how do we create and how do we adjust to certain circumstances. It was sort of like, how do we come out stronger from our adversities? And I think definitely Project Symphony is a representation of one of those things. I think this production serves as a way for us all to feel like, hey, I can do this, it's possible. I can actually create something that's very unique to myself. I don't have to wait until things go back to the way they were. I can make something that is new. And I don't have to worry about the past. I can just go forward. So I think this is a really good space where we're at right now in terms of what we're doing. It's not the end point by any means, but it's a good point of departure for where things to come. I actually kind of want to respond to what you just said, Christian, um, and like agree with you. Um, I, I'm not like, I don't come from a traditional theater background. Like I haven't done a lot of theater and I've always like kind of wanted to, but I'm more coming from like a music standpoint. And it's kind of hard to find a way in when you aren't already in sometimes. And so something that I've loved about this project is that, and what you had just said, Christian, being in this time of the pandemic and like getting this opportunity is just telling me how I can try something and not have to be afraid of the expectations or the requirements or the standards that were put in place because this project has like shown that there, there, there are no standards and there doesn't have to be any <laughs> in order to create something cool and unique. And I watched it with my roommates upstairs um, who like didn't who pretty much didn't see me do this project at all because I did it by myself. And they were like, Lizzie, your face is so expressive. Like you look like you're really giving into the piece. And it was hard for me to tell because like, I can't really see what Brad was filming, but I was trying to like be into it and like connect to like the part of the songs that I liked. And I actually like, I think I'm, I'm proud of what got, came from it. And um, it's hard to say that if there's fellow performers in here, it's hard to say that about yourself. Um, I mean, maybe it's just me, but um, yeah. And so I don't know, like, I think that's one positive that has come from this, at least from my point of view is that like, it's actually good that the pandemic has allowed us to slow down in a way and like create from what comes within and not from with like outside, not from pressures outside. And so I think that's really good. And that's, yeah. Be beautifully said. Uh, I think that's one of the things that's always been a big part about for me in theater as well as I love to make things because like Lizzie, I didn't come from a very big theater background. I've only been doing theater for less than five years. Uh, in terms of UCSD. So to be able to do theater and to be able to be part of a community that is uh, unique and, you know, beautiful and dark and light and, you know, it's different things that go on with, you know, the communities in which we engage ourselves. And one of the things I told myself I want to make sure that happened is to make things accessible to as many people, you know, 
I want to make sure that if that young kid who says, hey, I saw a really great show, but I don't know if I can ever be part of that. I want that kid to know that you can be part of that because at the end of the day, we're here to tell stories that are true to ourselves and that's true courage. So cheers to Project Symphony for being the way. Um, if there are no further questions, I'd like to have this be a concluding moment for our talk back. Um, yes, Daniel. Um, this isn't a question, but I just want to um, give a shout out to my uh, my friend Roselle. Um, her work wasn't able to be shown tonight, but um, she wrote like three beautiful um, songs. And um, I just, um, I'm really proud of her. And I just, um, I wish she was able to like um, show her song and her work. It's really amazing. And um, I just wanted to give her a shout out because she worked really hard for this. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. Roselle has really grown the year that I've known her, and I'm really proud of her too. Um, I also wanted to open the floor if anyone has any takeaways that they'd like to share um, about what this process has been like, um, what this year has been like, and what you want the audience to take away from it. Um, so if anyone wanted to share something that's been on their mind or on their heart, you can go ahead and use this time. Just five um, Sorry. No, you're fine. You can go. No, I was just saying we're just vibing out at this point. If anybody has any questions, reactions, I could go on for days about this show, but I want to make sure the floor is open to everybody. I just wanted to congratulate everybody again because we we did this. We made a thing in a pandemic. Like I just it baffles me sometimes like 2020 has been such an unprecedented year in so many ways like if you think back to where you were last year like December 2019 could you have ever imagined any of this I know I couldn't and the fact that we have seen out this whole year and we have ended our fall quarter by making a thing like we how many people were in this show like administration management videography writing performing like dozens of people came together and made a thing and that i think is very powerful so even if you just blinked in the direction of project symphony like your contribution is so meaningful and this this i hope this is a positive that you can take away from this year um, if i may uh, go ahead and add on um to that while we're uh, while we're sharing our feelings and stuff um i i really hope that for audience members who watch this show from beginning to end whether it was um one of my pieces whether it was daniel's performance whether anyone's performance um we hope that you 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 listen you listen to it not just with your ears but with your hearts as well and hopefully that um it inspires you to do better um, this year has un unfortunately caused us to um, shut down in a lot of ways. But I hope that shows like this, performances like this, and people who have these types of personalities um, inspire you to um, be better people, even when years come around like this where they tell you to, to not be yourself when you shouldn't be. Um, yes, we're in a pandemic, but that doesn't mean that the person who you are should change with that um, as well. So I really hope that um, what you take out of this is that you, um, you, 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 you leave it a better person and, and hopefully whatever comes within the next, hopefully, what are the final months of this pandemic will uh, will all leave stronger? All right, well, that was beautifully said. Uh, I also want to close off and say, you know, everybody, thank you for working with me, honestly. Uh, again, being able to tell stories in a time like this is something that I generally cherish a lot, so. I really appreciate that this is my very first musical and very first time being with Mirror Musical. 
So it was really something special. So send you all virtual hugs. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, I, I actually have a question. Um, my name, my name's Raymond. Um, I have a long theater background. I've been doing it since uh, I was in kindergarten. Um, and I, I really appreciated, um, uh, Andres told me about this and I was excited to, to watch it and, and participate. Um, so my question is, now that the project has completed, um, sort of in support of your other members, what constructive criticism would you offer um, to each other on sort of like lessons learned from the project? That's a very good question. So there are definitely a lot of things that we learned and could definitely carry on to make things much better. Uh, one of those things for, on the, from the forefront is our, our vulnerability to create. There's a big step about how do you become vulnerable with your imagination. So one of the things for me, is, and one of the biggest hurdles for me as a director when I work on a piece is I'm used to giving a certain direction instead of giving my idea of an interpretation of a text to my performer. But one of the things I wanted to make sure that I was doing with this piece is to, you know, capitalize on the imagination of my collaborators. So for the very early performer, it's going to be a different task for them to sort of understand, like, how do I interpret this? How do I understand it? And how do I make it accurate and authentic to what I'm trying to do? So that sometimes became an issue sometimes on the days of the set, because we would say, okay, you've done your work. You know, I'm assuming you've done your work before you came, you have an understanding of who you are, and you know, I've given you some viewpoints about what to do and how to understand the piece. And you've also spoken with the songwriter. So it's, it sort of lies a lot about uh, what type of homework are, are your performers doing? And sometimes that would cut into our filming times. And that's another thing is, you know, like for example, I'll speak on the Daniel situation is we have a very limited amount of time when we're in a space. So whenever you have to work on a piece that is very time constraining, for a lot of theater artists, it's, it's different. Usually we have a set rehearsal time and that's it, we're just rehearsing with lines. You don't have the added stakes of saying, oh no, this is it, this is my shot, I gotta make sure I'm filming it and getting it done, the, and getting it done well. So the, when we shot Daniel's scenes, that was it. That was our one day, camera's done, that's it, we're done. We can't, we can't come back to the space because of our restrictions with how the virus works. So it taught me, and I think it taught my videographer a lot about how do we effectively plan something plan something, but also deal with the fact that our plan's not gonna go the way we expect it to. So that's the big thing about filming. Did you, did you find that to be a, a struggle? Like, like you as the director, like you, your job is constructive criticism. So did right. you find it to be a struggle to like provide preemptive constructive criticism? Like make sure you, meet these things and you've done this research and like yes was that a struggle so, for you so yes it was a struggle for me primarily because it's a point where i'm used to dealing with one script at a time you know i have a play and i have a script and i have a vision that's clear and defined but for this one it's sort of like i'm dealing not only with a mother and father but i'm also dealing with the vision for uh, ready for you which is a duet in which we have not only just two performers but we also have three dancers so it's sort of where i'm coming from where do i sort of tangibly keep all of my homework and tasks for each performer on a set way, which is why I have a wonderful stage management team and assistant director. <laughs> so they help me keep me in a chill state while I'm trying to manage everything artistically. But giving the preemptive criticism is very important because my artists and my performers have to come in vulnerable and open to changing on a fly. Like I'll just walk through Daniel's situation when we were doing one of his scenes is we had to understand like, hey, here you are, your mother and father, you're dealing with a situation of, of a child trying to deal with the conflicting opinions of your parents. And what comes out of that? What type of personal reflections do you have out of that? I know not many people come from the same background as Eddie in terms of his circumstances, his, his family, but many of us can sort of relate to the idea of being caught in the middle of two people that, that you care about and sort of like, how do you choose who do you care about more or how do you sort of find the self-care to distance yourself from their own drama because your feelings matter just as much as theirs. So I not only had to prepare and sort of work on the fly with that directing with Daniel in lieu of our three hour time limit that we had in the mom cafe. So those were just some of the things that I embraced, <laughs> but I was also like, oh no, the anxiety levels are rising. Like, oh no, what do we do? We're running out of time. And I'm trying to make sure that things are clear to my performer so those are just some of the things. And 
that time constraint was actually something that we worked with a lot of even outdoors because during the fall quarter five o'clock it's dark you know we're done <laughs> so you know if we start a sh uh, our filming at three or two we have a very limited amount of time and of course we're also allotting time for breaks and then we have to make sure weather's permitting so uh i enjoy it i enjoy the unexpected nature of how things are i don't have to deal with a, a set in terms of like what we have in terms of a space that we're using but i have to deal with the the wonkiness of mother nature which is something that i embrace and she has like has a lot of criticism herself so that's a lot of things i deal with so that was a, sort of a long-winded response to your question but i don't know if that really touched on any of the things that you're thinking about yeah well i was just thinking like a, a normal like stage production the standard sort of is you have the rehearsal and you offer notes during it, but at a certain point, the director just kind of sits back and lets the actors do their thing and kind of experiment or whatever, and then offers notes at the end. Like how much, how much was this process? Did that change that dynamic and the time constraints? It's, it's harder to give that feedback and how much collaboration was there between people? And So the collaboration was a big part. There wasn't enough time for just stringent feedback for each person each time. A lot of it relied on the collaboration between myself, the songwriter, and the performer. And it really fell a lot on the laps as well as to how open in communication the performer was going to be with the songwriter and the piece, which is why we said, hey, every time before we're having you sending your recordings of the songs each time to my music director, that way we know you're engaging with the piece. You know you're trying to get more familiar with the piece and how do you kind of yourself more intimately tied to it? Because one of the things that I always told us in every show that I've worked on is, I can tell you to go pick up the cup off the table or go left or go right, but then that will just be rote and it's not going to look good to me. So I'd rather you know why you're picking up that cup or why you're going to yell at your Aunt Hattie because if you don't, you're just going to say the line is going to be as it is. So authenticity is where it's at for me in terms of how we sort of do our homework. And I've been known to be the type of director who gives his people a lot of homework. So they say, oh my gosh, I, didn't, I thought I was going to rehearsal. I didn't know I was going to class. But I said, I do it because I need you to know exactly where you are at. Because if you do, I just have to tighten things as they go. So there was no time for feedback. It was just a really a lot of terms of just having me making sure that the performers were embraced into the device nature of this piece. <clears throat> well, I think maybe my next question uh, going off of that is for each of the, the performers and the writers, um, now that the project is finished, what is one thing you wish you could improve? from the project now, if you had another month or something or whatever it was, like what would you work on now, seeing the finished product? I think uh, I can, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You wanna go? Uh, okay, uh, I think for me as a songwriter and like kind of like produce the song too, like, um, I would definitely like want to improve the production a bit, especially because like we're on uh, like record. This is a virtual performance, and like everything is like recorded, so we're leaning towards to like want to be more perfect in how it presents at the end. So, um, I mean, like the quality of the sound and the music wise, I would definitely want to produce like them better. Like I know that if it's a live show like actually on stage it could be like different and yeah seen differently but yeah it in recording wise i would definitely want to make it better yeah that's what my perspective all right uh any other questions did that answer your question very clearly or no all right so Crystal, that point. Yes, thank you all for coming through and enjoying our production and for staying for the talk back. Um, I want to go ahead and plug our next show in your musical is Big Fish. It'll be coming out in the beginning of spring quarter. Um, it has already been cast. So they're starting rehearsals very soon here. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for the support. I hope you all have a great night. Um, and that being said, have a great night. Goodbye. Congrats, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.